morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. As we continue with our missions month, please let us all rise and grab your hymnals in front of you as we sing our first song this beautiful morning. Hymnal number 198, Onward Christian Soldiers. We will be singing the first and third stanza. Hymnal number 198, say amen if you are there. Amen. amen. On the first stanza, ready, sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before, Christ our royal master. A wonderful start. Let us continue singing. Open your hymnals to hymnal number 41. Hymnal number 41, Anywhere with Jesus. Hymnal number 41, we will be singing the first and second stanza. On the first stanza, ready, sing. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere He leads me in this world below Anywhere without Him dearest joys would fade Anywhere with Jesus I am not afraid Anywhere, anywhere fear I cannot know Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go I am not alone Other friends may fail me He is still my own Dreary ways Anywhere with Jesus Is a house of grace Anywhere, anywhere Fear I cannot know with Jesus I can safely go. Amen. Please get your Bibles as we read Psalm chapter 78, verses 21 to 30, to be led by Brother Kez Sebastian. Good morning, BBC. Again, Psalm 78, verses 29 to 30. 
Let us read all together. So they did eat, and we were filled. <laughs> For they gave their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them, and slew the fattest of them, and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still, and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity, and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock, and high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity, and destroyed them not. Ye may turned his anger away, and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away, and cometh not again. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for safely gathering us here today to worship you together as a church. Thank you for your continuous guidance and helping us throughout our days. Help Reverend Mensa as he preaches your word later, Lord, and help each and every one of us as we listen to comprehend and understand your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may all be seated as we listen to the choir.
Amen. Thank you, choir, for that wonderful song. Let us continue singing. Let us all stand and get our hymnals and turn it to hymnal number 180. Hymnal number 180, bring them in. Hymn number 180, say amen if you are there. Amen. On the first stanza, ready, sing. Hark, tis the shepherd's voice I hear. Out in the desert, dark and drear. Calling the sheep who've gone astray. Far from the shepherd's fold away. Bring them in. Wild and I, heart is the master speaks to thee. Go find my sheep wherever they be. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Amen. You may all be seated. Good morning. Okay, welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Uh, today is our second week of our, of our missions month. Maybe you're asking... What is, about, what is Missions Month? Why do we have Missions Month? No, Missions Month is really the month wherein our church focuses on, on our missionaries. We have more than uh, 69 missionaries that we support, and we have uh, more than, I think, 15 mission, local missionaries. When we say for, uh, foreign, of course, uh, uh, no, uh, other countries, local, we still have uh, local missionaries that we support here in, in, in the Philippines. So, yeah, so this month, um, this is our second week. Last week, we have um, our missionary uh, to Kazakhstan. And uh, last Wednesday, we have a missionary going to um, Congo. Congo. Uh, Pocopio. Uh, missionary Pocopio. So he, he had a very good message last Wednesday that we should con continue in the faith. But anyway, um, today we have our, our missionary also from going to Ghana. And also uh, Wednesday we have our missionary going to Norway. If you enter the church, if you go at the back, there are diff different uh, booths of the, of the countries that the, are, are featured missionaries for, for the month. We have, we have six. So why do we have this mission? So we, have, we want everybody, all of, all of you, to be involved in missions. We have boots also. We want everybody to be involved in, you know, participate in, in, in our, you know, get involved in our church. And of course, if you can see our uh, missions giving also, we have, we have our, our, our barometer there. We, uh, for the for the past five years, our goal is um, 70,000 per week in order to support our, our missionaries. And, and, and with that, um, uh, on, on the fourth week, on the fourth week of our fourth Sunday, we will have our uh, missionary from Vietnam. And I have an announcement here for, for all the ladies. On, on November 23, inside, inside your messengers, there's a, a flyer here for all the ladies. Uh, there will be a ladies' uh, fellowship 
or this will be on Saturday, November 23, at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And, and the cost is only 100 pesos. Your theme is uh, serving, joy in, in serving. Joy in serving. Truly, it's really a joy to, 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 serve, to serve the Lord. So, other announcement would be uh, this afternoon. Uh, is there young people? Young people at, at 1.30, continue at 1.30 this afternoon. And again, be back at uh, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock for our after, afternoon, afternoon service. Okay, so I'd like to acknowledge our first-time visitors. I met one at the back. His name is Ray. Uh, time first time visitor. Meron ba tayong first time first time visitor today at Baptist Bible Church? Your first time. Ah, wala. Okay, more second time. Ah, we have here. Nakita ko yung can you please stand up? Uh, there's there's two on, on my on my left. We have two visitors. Merong mga yellow tag. Okay. Ayan. Welcome. Welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Ayan. Meron pa ba? Meron pa tayo? Oh, at the back, we do have uh, two. Okay, welcome. Welcome dito sa Baptist Bible Church. Okay, we're happy that you're here with us to worship with us here this morning. Kung meron pa ba? Oh, Lana. So let's all stand up please and let's uh, welcome our visitors. And after our welcome song, we'll, we'll hear from our local missionary, Pastor Sunny Ayon. Amen. Let us go around and shake hands with smiles on our faces as we sing our welcome song. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces Praising God in heavenly places Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people Ang puso ko'y masaya pagkasama ko kayo Sa Diyos sumiibig Puso ko'y masaya Pagkasama ko kayo Sa Diyos sumiibig Oy gandang pagmasdan Ang kanyang tanawin Na Diyos ang pinupuri natin O ako'y masaya Pagkasama ko kayo Tanging sa Diyos Tanging sa Diyos Tanging sa Diyos Ay umiibig Amen! You may all sit down. You may all take your seats as we listen to a special number to be followed by the testimony of Pastor Sonny Ayon. Oh 
Thank you, Saya, Saya leaders. Um, yung local missionary natin, Pastor Sunny Ayon, uh, is also a graduate of Asia Baptist Bible College. And while he was here, he stayed in the dorm. He also became, uh, he was once a uh, uh, youth leader also, jeepney captain. Uh, he became a, a former staff of the church. And now he's uh, now in, 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 in Samar. And I'd like to call Pastor Ayon and tell more about his work in, in, in summer. Okay, good morning. Okay, it's a uh, blessing to be here. Uh, to it ko na makapasyal dito. Uh, actually, di pa, ang mga kapatid ko nga nagtatampo, di pa kami nag-meet. <laughs> so, unahin ko muna Santa Misa. Anyway, Thank you for this privilege. Actually, I just want to come and attend service, but thank God for this privilege to share to you the ministry because I believe Santa Masa is one of the greatest partner. Whatever we had accomplished, whatever uh, the ministries uh, accomplished, it is through Santa Misa. Okay, so before I uh, share more, I will show some uh, a video, a short video is about our church building after we purchased the property since 2013, December, until this year. Video now is ready? Okay, let's watch first the short video.
Sure, no? uh, maybe you will think, actually, uh, our average is, we are not reaching 30 yet. Hindi pa pa kami nakaabot pa ng 30. But I was, uh, was so glad to share this to you, even though we don't have that numbers, but we have, God give us that building. And just, I just, yung po ang gusto ko pa share sa inyo. But those things na uh, kita nyo na building, it was because of the vision of the pastor. Because in my heart, I said, I don't want the church will be look, you know, not good because that is what I learned from the church. Dapat ang simbahan ng Diyos ay makita ang glory ng Diyos. Sabi ko sa mga members, we don't have not money, but we started. Actually, if you noticed, our goal is to, to build the, the wall. It's here. It's here. But if you notice, only 10 years since we bought the property, until now, it is all by the grace of God. And sometimes it is one of the part, the greatest part of this uh, building. I remember, I just want to share this. And I remember uh, when we built it, the roof, if you notice the roof we had is slab because you know summer is uh, highway of typhoons so i don't want to gather some uh, roof after typhoon so i said we will build a roof so that no one will fly during typhoon so by the grace of god we build it and then actually we don't have that money uh, i just happened that uh, i have that uh, i am so what I did, so we started and then actually uh, nakauta kami sa isang hardware just to be finished. And I just want to share this. Then Pastor Lyles told me uh, how much you owe in the hardware. I said, Pastor, it's 59. I still have to pay 59. But when I double check, the hardware told me, you don't ask uh, 59, you, uh, you owe us um, 69. So, so I miss again, Pastor Lyons, Pastor, it's not 59, it's 69. But the grace of God, Pastor Lyons, uh, through this church, sent me 96. So my is 69, and then he, he sent me 96. So nabaliktad. So, kaya po nagkaroon po kami ng extension sa front and then we just add and then by the grace of God where, uh, we have tiles, it's only a blessings because somebody visited us and then they saw that our, ta our floor is not good and then they said, Pastor, your, your, uh, your floor will be soon be tiles. But when we, we have already the tiles but our wall is not good. There's no finishing yet, so I said, let's have our finishing. I challenged our members, and then we were able to have our finishing. And then we had, after that, we have tiles, we have finishing of our walls, our window. So I said again to the members, members, we have a good floor, but our window is open. So we challenged, and some members said, okay, Pastor, I will uh, uh, give one window. So. The Lord gave it to us, even the door. And then the last year, 2013, our goal is to be, to be painted. I, I usually, my goal every year, there must be accomplished. That's why if you notice, every year there is improvement of the church. Because that's my goal, that uh, the church will be Im Im improved each year. And I do, I do believe those things happen also because of your help. So for those members, your money that you're giving to the mission, uh, this is the result of your monies. You send some churches, the, those churches needs, and this church is very a lot. That, uh, po ang ang church ito. Uh, that's why I do believe the church that we have been builded, it is through the help. Also, uh, Santa Misa. That's why napakalaki po ang aking papasalamat and I thank you and I hope and pray 
that you will continue helping, uh, continue giving to mission para marami pa mga churches ang uh, magagawa. Because if, because kung kami lang po, I tell you, you know the condition of our uh, church. Uh, just imagine we are not that many, we are less than 30. Sometimes we reach 30, but uh, regularly attendance 25 to 28. Regular attendance, it's uh, Sunday. But I so thank God for the faithfulness of our members and of course the faithfulness of those people who help us in the ministry. And this is an And I'm so thankful and I would like you to know that our church always pray for you. Our church is always pray for you. I tell to the church, let's not miss to pray for Santa Misa. Thank you very much and God bless po. Uh, good morning, everyone. Church, uh, today is our missions month. Uh, nagpapasalamat tayo lahat na napakaraming na involved sa decoration, giving ng uh, booth, yung preparation natin for the advertisements sa mga booth natin for our missionary. And we are so grateful na lahat tayo as a church are nagpa-participate dito sa ating missions conference. For this morning, uh, I would like to ask everyone, are you happy for today? Say amen. amen. So if you are happy for today, uh, we welcome natin yung isa sa pinakamahal natin na missionary, our very own in our church. Today, uh, nandito sila ng kanyang asawa. Tayo po tayo, uh, Pastor Anthony, Missionary Anthony and Caroline. Let's recognize them. So thank you. And today, uh, it is a very exciting moment for us as a church to celebrate the Missions Month Conference. Kasi marami po tayo mga activity na gaganapin dito sa church natin. And every Sunday po, at wag po natin mimiss yung opportunity na mag-invite para yung mga member po natin na wala dito makapag-participate po sa ating Missions Month. So, let's uh, acknowledge the presence of our speaker for this morning. Our speaker for the, this morning is missionary to Ghana. Uh, he is Anthony Amensa. He got saved under the ministry of Pastor Felix Arma. Uh, kilala niyo po si Pastor Felix Arma. Siya po ay nag-graduate din po dito. He came to the Philippines on June 4, 2019 and graduated at Baptist Bible College Asia Baptist Bible College, June 11 of 2023. He is married uh, to Ma'am uh, Caroline uh, last June 16 of 2023. He is ordained last November 3 of 2023 and accepted in uh, Baptist uh, Clearing House last February 2023. So, with no further ado, may I call on and welcome Pastor, Pastor Anthony Mensa, our missionary to Ghana, to challenge us and give us God's message. Good morning, church. And uh, it's always a uh, joy to be back home. Uh, I really miss the people here and also the church as well and uh, thank God for your prayers uh, ever since we started our deputation um, you have been faithfully praying for us and uh, God has been faithfully seeing us through uh, some places that we have been visited uh, during past months and even the last year uh, 2023 uh, as you know me I'm Anthony Mensa uh, I am not new here I have been here for uh, four years. Um, God has been bringing people who are godly people to my life. Uh, I came here, uh, I remember from there, Pastor Felix 
uh, sent me alone, and I, I boarded the, the airplane. I came here, Brother RJ and Christopher uh, met me at the airport. Uh, they brought me to the church, and uh, God being so good, when I came, uh, I have uh, moms here in the church. I always call them mom, uh, mom Bibert, mom Carol, mom Grace, mom Sherry. Uh, they have been good to me. I mean, I was alone, and uh, uh, they have been taking care of me uh, through the church, and I always say thank you, church, uh, for being um, a hospitable church uh, who cares for people, uh, not only the Filipinos, but also those from other parts of the world. Uh, I got saved under the ministry of missionary Felix Armour uh, in the year 2015, and uh, after I got saved, uh, I helped him in the church. We go out, share the gospel tracks, uh, knock doors, and, and uh, present gospel to them. Ghana is a free country like here. Uh, you can share the gospel anywhere, everywhere. Uh, so we've been, I have been helping missionary Felix in his uh, mission work in Ghana. And in the year 2019, he brought me here. And uh, when I came here, I remember when I went to the dorm, uh, one question that Brother RJ asked me is, Anton, are you sure uh, you can finish school or you can finish the course? And my answer was, all things are possible through Christ who strengthened us. And I remember during the time of COVID, uh, we were only five people in the church and things were very hard for us and especially me as a foreigner and I mean, you don't have so many people to talk to. Even the five people in the church, there was a separation because of the COVID. Uh, so somebody is sleeping here, another person is here. And sometimes it, it becomes very hard and, and discouragement started to set in. But God is good that through his strength, uh, he strengthens me to finish the school. And uh, now our burden, um, I and my wife, our burden is to go back to Ghana. And this morning, I came here with my wife, uh, Caroline Blanca Mensa, and uh, my daughter, uh, I think she is in the nursery, uh, Shiloh Caris Mensa. And I always say, my wife is Mapute, and my daughter is Major Mapute, and I am Sobra Sobra Mapute. <laughs> so we have three callers uh, in my family, and, and God is good that uh, we can come together and, and from, uh, from a family. Uh, this morning, our plans is to go back to Ghana this coming January uh, 2022. Uh, uh, so we need your prayers uh, as we have already uh, buy our plane tickets. And uh, we are praying for the visa for my wife and my daughter. Uh, my daughter is now also a Filipina, so uh, she need a visa before going back to Ghana. And uh, we have sent our the, the requirement to, to the consulate. Uh, we don't have embassy here, uh, so we, I just send you to the consulate, and we are praying that God will be uh, working through them so that they will not take long in processing the visa for us so that in uh, January 22, uh, we can move back to Ghana and start the ministry there. And we cannot do without you, church. Thank you for your partnership with us and your prayers. And I believe that everything that you are doing in the ministry, uh, your giving and your prayers, as the Bible has promised, will never be in vain. So let this encourage us to continue uh, doing the work of the Lord. Let us watch the three-minute video, if it is ready. See in the sand 
Jesus came to set the captives free. Showed us by the way He lived, the way we need to be. Our love is more than words could ever say. We must touch them with compassion to help them find their way. Hello, Elliot. 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 Jesus. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. La calabaza. Barabasa cabasa. are the things that is happening in Ghana and uh, we need Bible believing churches in Ghana not only to follow miracles and, and I believe that the greatest miracle that we can have is for our Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross to save us and uh, thank you Pastor Jeremiah Solomon and the church uh, staff for this opportunity to preach here and thank you all those uh, when I was living here uh, those who were showing their love to me, thank you everyone. I cannot mention names, uh, but I really appreciate your love that you showed to me. Shall we all stand and open our Bibles if you have one with me? Uh, this morning we will be reading from the book of Acts. Um, I just uh, chose your theme uh, to preach about the theme that is uh, for this uh, mission conference. So just open your Bible to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, verse number 8. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Are you there with me? Amen. Let's read um, Acts 1, 8. Just follow me with your eyes. In verse number 8, the Bible says, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, or Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the outermost part of the earth. Let us pray, God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning. We thank you for being a faithful and a merciful Father to us. We thank you for dying on the cross to save a wretch like us. We deserve to die but through your compassion for us. You came and died on behalf of us. Therefore, God, we came here, we are here with one heart and one mind, and all our heart and mind is to magnify, praise, and give in glory that is due unto your name. I pray that you give us a heart, that we see the things that you saw. I pray that you give us a heart, that we will not love only this praise, place, but we will be able to move out and share the gospel to other people. I pray that you will strengthen us even when we, were, we are weak. I pray that you encourage us and bring comfort to us when your word comes to our heart. And this morning I pray as your servant, humble me before this throne 
and help me put words in my mouth so that I will be able to speak nothing but the truth to your people. With all these things, I do pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may now take your seat. There is something that we always hear. That mission is the heartbeat of God. And God's heart always beats for the souls of men. In the year 2,000 years ago, the Bible made us to know that God sent his son to come and die on behalf of us. The Bible said he was equal with God. And even being equal with God, he never thought it twice to humble himself and took upon him a form of man and came to sacrifice for us. We who deserve to die and perish and go to hell through the, the, the love and compassion of God, he came from above to die so that we can have eternal life. And Christ came, we saw the things that came upon him. He faces challenges. He went through offerings. He cried. He earth. So on the earth, we can see that he is not only God, but he is also in the form of human. And that is one thing that some people, sometimes they think that Christ is only human. But the Bible made us to know that before the world was created, he was there. And the world was with God, as John 1.1 1, 1 made us to know. And he came to die, and after his death, he was able to resurrect it. He was buried and resurrected after three days and three nights. And after he, his resurrection, he met the disciples. And we can see here in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that Christ was talking to the disciples. Christ, after his death, he never stayed in the grave. He never remained in his grave, but by the power of God and through his work that he needs to accomplish from human beings, he was able to be resurrected. That is why 1 Corinthians 15 made us to know if Christ wasn't res resurrected from his grave, our gospel is nothing. There, is, there will be no power in our gospel because the work was not finished. Even though it was finished on the cross. But if Christ was not being able to be resurrected from the, the grave, it is in vain. But Christ was able to be resurrected from the grave. And here he was, the Bible made us to know in Acts chapter 1 that after his resurrection, he appears to so many people. And all the disciples were able to saw him. And many people were able to saw him. And he came and met the disciples. And the Bible said he spent 40 days with them. Teaching them and telling them the things that they need to do. So Christ spent 40 days with his disciples. Teaching them about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. In verse number 3 we see in Acts chapter 1 verse number 3. Uh, we will see how Christ was talking to the disciples. And he told them, I mean, the, the great commission happened in Matthew chapter 28, by the way of Christ, commissioning the disciples to go all nations and preach the gospel to them. But here in Acts chapter 1, before they will go, Christ told them to wait. I mean, even though I have commissioned you to go, but you need to wait for something. And the disciples waited. And he told them they should wait for the promise that the Father has prepared for them. And the disciples, when he hear them, they, they ask questions. They, they ask our Lord Jesus Christ a questioning about what the Father has prepared for them. The question was, in verse number six, he said, when they therefore were come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? 
The disciples were asking Lord Jesus Christ because Christ has mentioned to them that they should wait for the kingdom of God and they will be able they will be baptized spiritual baptism or baptism by spirit. So they were thinking that maybe something is going to happen. And the question was Christ are thou going to restore Again, the kingdom to Israel. So the disciples' mindset was something that is before. I mean, their mindset is the millennium is coming. God is going to restore Israel. And that will be the millennium, millennium time for, on this earth that the whole Israel will be restored once again. But Christ made them to know that before you think about the, the, the future, the things that will happen you need to concentrate on the things that need to be done before. And what he told them in verse number 7, he said, And he said unto them, It is not for, thy, for to you, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. I mean, sometimes we rush to, to understand God before even God. We rise to, to go ahead before God. But God said something, some things are purposely reserved for God himself. You know, I think Deuteronomy made us to know secret things belong to God. And it is what it is. That is how we need to keep it. Some things are for God and we don't need to rush and go before God. God, Jesus Christ, made them to know. That it is not time for you to know. That is in the hands of God. But there is something that you need to do at this time. And that is what the Bible made mention in Acts 1.8. That he commissioned them to go. And by his commission he made, made mention some things inside. And, and that is the thing that God has put in my heart for us to look upon those things. The title of my message is you shall be my witnesses. Ye shall be my witnesses. Uh, before, in order for us to go out and preach the gospel or to witness the gospel to others, we need something from our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what he reveals to the disciples. He made it known to the disciples. And we can see from our verse, he said, but you shall receive what? Power. Christ knew that the disciples, through his, their own strength and might, they cannot do the work of God. And in order for them to go and accomplish the work that Christ has commissioned them to do, they need the power of God with them. So he said, but you shall receive power. So the first point I would like you to know is the power, which has come from the Holy Ghost. And as I have mentioned, in Matthew chapter 28, the commission was made. But here Christ promised them that they should wait for something in order to go with. And that is the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the Father promised to them. And how this power help the disciples in going around and plant the, 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 the gospel or plant churches. And we can see through all the book of Acts. I mean, it is money, so I, I, could not, I will not be able to mention all those things. But the few that I have to share with you, that the power of God, when it comes to the disciples in their mission work, it helps them a lot. And I believe that the book of Acts is not a closed book. It is open book meaning it is something that we need to see continue from there. The things that was done by the disciples, that, that they are the foundation of the church and the church needs to go on to share the gospel to the unreached world. So here we can see that how does the power work in the, in the life of the disciples? We can see the Holy Ghost empowers their, their message. You know, in order for us to share the gospel, in order for us to go out and start a ministry or give gospel tracts or, or share the gospel to other people, we need the power of God in our lives. 
We need the power that will empower our message. The message is not about us. The message is God. And God's power needs to be the one to empower our message so that when we speak, the message can work in the heart of the believers. So look at me in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, immediately the, the, on the Pentecost, the Holy Ghost filled the disciples. The Bible made us know that Peter stood on his feet to preach the word of God. He preached about Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 2. And the Bible made, that, made us to know that 3,000 souls were saved. And these were not the, the, the miracles or the, the strength of our Peter. It was what the power that God gave it to them. And the power works whenever they preach the gospel to other people. The power became a light for them to make their message heavy. To break the stiff neck heart of humans. In the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible made us to know that when Peter preached, 5,000 souls were saved. And this is the revival that we can have. That today, churches will stand up and preach the gospel depending on the power that God has given to us. So that souls will be, will be saved. And when we look in the book of Acts chapter 5, the Bible made us to know that the multitude become saved. So it was all about preaching the gospel, making the gospel known. And God's power will be the one to work in the hearts of the people. That is what mission we need to depend upon. We need to depend upon the strength of God in our Christian life. We need to depend upon the strength of God in our living life. We need to depend on the strength of God when we are giving the gospel to other people. And we need to believe with our heart that when we preach the gospel, when we give the gospel, God will use the gospel to change the life of people. When I was not saved, I thought nothing in this world. All what I think is, I thought was, I have come to live and I will die and go. But when the gospel was shared to me, there was burning inside my heart, which makes me to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Church, we still need this power of God in our lives. We still need God's power. If we want to be, be impact in the mission, be impact in sharing the gospel of Christ, then we need to still depend in and ask God for his strength and power in our lives. That is why in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of God. For it is the power unto God. Paul believed and knew that the message of God is the power of God. And whenever Paul would preach the message, God will use the message to change the life of people. I mean, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 made us to know that the, the gospel or the word is two-edged sword. It cuts the heart of people and it, it, it doesn't leave it cut just like that. It amend it. It cut it, and the Bible itself, or the word itself, amend it as well. You know, that is why whenever we hear the gospel, it cuts through our hearts. And the Bible will amend it for us to know Christ Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only the empowerment of their message, but the, the power of the Holy Ghost empowers them to pray and listening to the direction of God. He empowers them to, to pray and ask from God. And he is the, also the one who will lead them to certain places that they should go and places that they should not go. And we can see that it works in the life of apostles. And what we can see here, I mean, we knew that in the apostles, according to Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 26. Just, let, let us just read from Matthew chapter 26. And we will see something there in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. 
verse number 41 to 44. These are the disciples who prayer becomes a problem for them. They don't even try to even pray. They don't even pray depending on God, even though they were with Christ, but they don't even pray. And Matthew chapter 26, 41, the Bible made us know when Jesus Christ was praying. I mean, this is the word. Let's start from verse number 40. It said, And he came unto the disciples and finded them asleep and said unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? They couldn't even pray for one hour. And in verse number 41, he said, Watch and pray. This is the instruction from our Lord Jesus Christ. That they should watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And it, but the Bible said in 42, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup, I mean, in verse number 43, I said, He came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So these are the condition of the disciples before. That even prayer becomes difficult for them. They cannot even stand and pray for even one hour. But when Christ gave them the Holy Spirit, when he empowers them with the Holy Spirit, look at what happened in the book of Acts. You know, when, when last time when I was reading my book, the book of Acts, when I got there, I decided to tip all the prayers that the disciples prayed. And the Bible made me to know that they prayed for, in the book of Acts, 26 times. The disciples who prayer becomes difficult for them, look when the, God empowers them to go and to be a witness into this world or into the world that Christ sent them to go. The Bible said in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Look, look to the book of Acts chapter 2, verse number 42. Acts 2, verse number 42, he said, And they continue steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in bread and in breaking of bread and in prayers. These are the disciples who continue there and in prayers. And in Acts chapter 3, verse number, Acts chapter 3, verse number 1, he said, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Some, some people that they cannot even pray for one hour. Now they have a time to pray for God. And they have set a time, I mean prayer hour, that every time they will be able to go down on their knees and pray to God, asking God's strength for them. And these are not merely uh, through their own power, but it was the Holy Spirit within them that reminds them and encourages them to pray, depending on God. And this is what we need as a church. We need to be reminded by the Holy Spirit that we need to pray every time asking God His strength upon our lives. In Acts chapter 6, verse number 4, the Bible says, Access for is that, but we will give ourselves continually to what prayers and to the ministry of the word. These are the, the words of the believers, the disciples that we will give ourselves continually not to food, not to tissues, not to anything that will be an obstacle in, in our life of sharing the gospel, to, but we will give ourselves to prayers, and they believe that through prayers, God will reveal his, himself to them. God will be able to respond to their prayer request. God will be able to, to give the things that they need. And that is what's the cause of the Holy Spirit. Believers, somebody always says that believer failure is a prayer failure. Every believer's failure is a failure because that person is not praying. 
Because when we pray, God strengthens us. He's listening to our prayers. Not only the time that we are in problem, that we will be praying, asking favor from God, asking God to work in, on our behalf. But we will be praying as God has commanded us to go out and share the gospel to the world. And we can see how the Holy Spirit also led or led them. We can read from Apostle Paul when he wanted to go to the place of Macedonia. And, and the, the Bible made us to know that the Spirit suffered Apostle Paul. The Spirit was able to be the leader in the life of Apostle Paul. And that is why Paul was able to plant churches in this world. Church, we can be impacted in what mission when we pray asking God to help us. When we come together as a church, and that is why every missionary, when he comes to church, the first thing he made mention is prayer. Pray for us that when we go, we will be able to share the gospel to people. Pray for us that when we go, the people that we are going to share the gospel, they will have a receptive heart to receive the gospel. Prayer needs to be something that will be in our blood. Needs to, to be something that we will give ourselves unto. And not only that, but the Holy Spirit empowers them to be bold or with boldness. This is what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives. That people, some people that they were not even know, they didn't go to school, they, didn't, they don't have any qualification, but Christ called them. And he used them in his ministry. And, and we can see how bold Peter, Paul, they were in preaching the gospel. We need the boldness from God, his spirit to endure us and, and to for, be with us and, and, and give us the boldness to speak every time we meet people. You know, sometimes sharing the gospel becomes a problem to us. Sometimes we become so afraid and we keep asking ourselves, what about if I give it to him and he re rejects the gospel? What about if I share the word of God to him and he rejects me? I become so disappointed. But hey, God wants you to be bold in sharing the gospel to others. God wants you. I mean, the Bible made us to know in 2 Timothy 1.7 that the spirit that he gave us is not the spirit of fear, but it is the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. This is the spirit that God gave to us. This is the spirit that God gave to the apostles. This is the spirit that works within the missionary work or the mission work of the apostles. And this is the same spirit that is working in our life. When we see from the Bible in the verse number 12, I mean Acts chapter 2, verse number 12 and 13, the Bible made us to know that when the Spirit filled them, people start to mockery them. People start to doubt the things that were, has happened to the apostles. And even they went on to say that these people are drunk people. Look at them, they have drunk. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse number 29, that Peter, with boldness, he preached the gospel. In Acts chapter 4, 29, he said, And now, Lord, behold, there are threatenings, and grant unto thy servant that which all boldness, they may speak thy word. And look at me in verse number 31, he said, And when they had prayed, I mean the prayer that we have mentioned, the place was shaking. This is what, when the, uh, Peter was in prison, and they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with what? With boldness. With boldness. We need boldness from God. We need to be bold in giving to missions. You know, sometimes we become so afraid. I mean, if I give to the missionary, if I give to the missions, what am I going to be bold in the spirit? Because God is with us. God is going to be with us. And he is with us. And he has promised that he is with us. God promises with us that he will never forsake us. The gospel is not our word. It is God's word. We must communicate it 
faithfully with all boldness. We must pray to God to give us boldness to witness his word. And that is what Apostle Paul did. In the book of Ephesians chapter 9, 19 to 20, Paul prayed, asking boldness from God that he will be able to stand in front of people. You know, when I got saved, I was somebody who is very afraid. I mean, I remember when I was coming, the, the plane ticket that my pastor gave to me, he wrote on at the back of the plane ticket that I am a timid person. I mean, and I knew that at that time, when I was not saved, very afraid to speak to people. Very, I don't have the, the confidence, the boldness to speak to the people. But immediately I started to involve myself in the ministry of God. The fear started to wear off. It started to go. Why? The spirit endures me and empowers me to overcome my fears. And to be bold to preach the gospel. It is not about self-confidence, but it is about being boldness for Christ. It is about being boldness to share the gospel to our Lord Jesus Christ. And the last one I would like you to see, he empowers them with peace and comfort to keep on going and doing the ministry of God. We need peace from God. We need comfort from God. And that is what the, the name of the Holy Spirit is. He's a spirit of comfort. I mean, that is what the Bible promised us in, in John chapter 14. I think 14, 27 or 15, 26. That the, the comforter will come to us. That is what we need in our mission journey. That even when disappointment comes to us, we will be able to still have peace and comfort in our heart. Church, we need peace and comfort in our heart to share the gospel. You know, sometimes problems become rampant to us. And because of that, it brings all, all sorts of burden and all sorts of uh, anxiety to us. And because of that, sometimes it becomes even hard for us to come to church. Sometimes it becomes very hard for us to share the gospel. Sometimes it becomes very hard for us to go down and even pray to God. But we need to acknowledge that we have spirit that always produces peace within our heart. I mean, the fruit of the spirit, one thing it mentioned is what? Peace. That is the fruit of the spirit. And we can see in the book of Philippians when, when Paul was giving an antidote so the problem of anxiety, Paul made them to know that when problem comes, you pray and give thanks to God and the peace of God will dwell in your heart. This is what God wants us to do. If our mission journey will be successful and be pleased to God, then we also need to have peace. We also need to acknowledge the peace that God has given to us in our heart. And that will push us. That will make us not to be afraid. That will make us not to look onto our circumstances. That will make us to break the bounds and go out and preach the gospel to the fallen land. This is what the Spirit does. It strengthens us to keep on going and not to give up. The strength to preach the gospel with peace of comfort the strength to preach the gospel is the strength that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the strength that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's the strength that comes from God the Father to us. And even though when opposition rises and they do all sorts of things to us, we can still say that I still have peace and comfort within me. And because of that, what makes me to stop the things that God has given to me to do it. Upon all the accusation, when people are pointing hands on you, you will still acknowledge that there is spirit that is produces peace within your heart. And I don't mind anything that people will tell me. I will still be firmly and grounded on the word of God to make it known to other people. The second point I would like you to see is the proclamation. 
I mean, the Bible, and in Acts chapter 1, the Bible made us to know, is that, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is upon you. And Christ made mention something here, is that, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. These are the words of God. You shall be witnesses unto me. And that is all about making the gospel known to others. One thing that is mentioned in our verse is you shall be a witnesses unto me. And these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. And what was next is to be a witnesses of Christ. Is to preach the gospel of Christ. Is to make the gospel known to Christ. Christ appoints them with their work, and the work was to be a witnesses unto Him. And what is the meaning of witness or witnesses? When we talk about witnesses, the the, the word that Hebrew word gave to us is matus, and that is where we get our word metio or metio from by the way of somebody being persecuted. And here, what the word means, it means that people would die for their faith in Christ Jesus. It is not like Christ is commissioned the, the disciples to go and die on the, uh, in the world. But Christ was telling them something that if you are willing to testify the truth of the gospel message, no matter or regardless of who you are, there will be a persecution in your life. There will be a problem in your life. And, and to be a witness, I mean, this word also came. Today we use in the courtroom. That you witness for somebody, what you do is, or what you do is, you witness the things that you have seen and you have heard. That is what witness means in the room of court. That you will be able to witness the things that you have seen and heard. And that is why uh, Peter, uh, John said, the God that I have seen and I have heard and I have touched is the God that we witness to you, we share to you. Before we can be a witnesses of Christ, first of all, we need to experience Christ. We need to have him in our heart. We need to come to him bodily and come, say that, Christ, Lord, we are sinners before you. And through your mercy, your work on the cross of the Calvary, you have reconciled us. You have bring us back to the Father. The enmity between us and the Father, according to the book of Romans 1, you have break it and reconciled us once again to the Father. And that will help us to be a witnesses of God. Why? Because we will be able to experience Christ through the Holy Spirit. We will be able to learn Christ from the book, from the Bible, and we will be able to share Christ to other people. Christ saw that they have no strength of their own, no wisdom, no courage enough to stand. They were naturally weak men. They were foolish men on this earth that people reject and people despise. But Christ used them to become a channel of sharing the gospel to other people. No matter who you are, Christ can still use you. If you are only going to depend on him and be an obedient to Christ. You know, to be part of mission is not only the pastors or the missionary. It is the duty of the whole church. And if we will be able to be submissive and obedient to the word of God, the Bible says we will, be decide, we will be witnesses for him. And just look at here. The caution here, he didn't say that you'll be witnesses unto yourself. He didn't say that you'll be witnesses on your project that you have done. He didn't say that you'll be witnesses on the things that you have the power to do it. Christ said you will be witnesses unto me, unto him Christ. So our witnesses, our proclamation, if we remove Christ from everything that we preach in our church, it is in vain. There is no power in it. It, does, it will not go into bear any fruit for us. He said, you should be witnesses unto me, not to yourselves. If we witness ourselves to the people, 
And you know what will happen? People will still come to church. But there will be no genuine salvation for them. If we keep on to witness ourselves and, and preach ourselves to others, yes, in, 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 when you go to Ghana, the, the churches in Ghana, there are madami, lots of people in the church. But let me tell you, if you ask them, do, have you experienced Christ in your heart? They will look at your face and tell you, no, I don't know. If you ask them, do you know where you die, you will go. They will just look at your face and tell you that I don't know where will I end. Why? Because the preachers, there's nothing like preaching Christ to them. It is all about them. And God wants us to be witnesses unto him, but not unto ourselves. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, is that neither there is salvation in any other, for there is none other name and the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And if you are here and you, you do not know Christ, I want to tell you that there is only one Savior. There is only one Jesus Christ. There is only one God, and He has the power to save you. He is the one who died to buy us with his blood. He can only save you. Nothing on this earth. Human being cannot do it. And nothing can save us. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father but except through me. He is the life. He is the door that we need to enter in. And he is the way that we need to see. The third point I would like you to see is the program. The program, he said, and you shall be witnesses unto me. And if the Bible made mention that both in Jerusalem and to all Judea, to Samaria, and unto the outermost world or outermost part of the world. I mean, the program was given to the church. You know, it is sad that today, so many churches, they don't have mission programs in their church. I mean, the program was to start from where you are in order to reach other parts of the world. And that is the program that we can have in a church. And thank God for those who started this church, that they were able to have the vision to know that this is the program that we need to have in our church. You know, we have different, different kinds of program in the church. But if we miss the program of missions, then we have problem. We have problem in our church. Why? Because this is not a humanly given program. It is God himself giving to the church. It is God himself who gives the map in order for us to look through and go all those places to share the gospel to the people. He commanded them to go with the power that he has given to them, which is the Holy Ghost, to give the, the Holy Ghost to share the gospel to the people by the way of following the program that he has given to them. Where to start is our Jerusalem, and where to end is unto the outermost part of the world. And I want you to look here, the word both. He made mention the word both. And he said, shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the outermost part of the world. He didn't say that you shall be witnesses unto me after you finish in Jerusalem, you go to Judea, then you go to Samaria, then you go to the outermost world of, part of the world. And in human eyes, most of the times, we think it's in, impossible for us. How can one person or how can a church Start in Jerusalem, start in Judea, start in jo uh, Samaria, and start in outermost, outermost part of the world. And this can only be done through missions. That once we are here, we are in our Jerusalem, sharing the gospel to other people, we will be able to have partner with missionaries who are going to the outermost part of the world. And that is how we can reach even though we are in Manila, even though we are in Philippines, we will be able to reach other parts of the world and share the gospel to them. And thank God for the missionaries that we have in this church. That everything that they are doing in their mission, 
feed respectively, we also have part in it. Unto the outermost world or outermost part of the world. And we can see from the book of Acts that in Acts chapter 1 verse 7, the gospel started from Jerusalem. And in Acts chapter 8 verse 12, the gospel moves from Jerusalem to their city, uh, their Judea, and there it moves also to the Samaria. And we know the one who took the gospel to Samaria, Philip. I mean, the Bible made us to know in Acts chapter 8 that Philip, through when the persecution started, he went to the Samaria and shared the gospel to them. Church, the Great Commission is the program given to the church but by our Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to cherish it. We need to be an obedient to it. We need to hold it, uphold it, and share the gospel to other people. We cannot have any program which is better than having great commission in our church, than having the eye for missionaries. In order to conclude, we need to see that mission needs to be every church identity. Why? Because mission is the identity of Christ. Christ is a missionary. And we need to understand this. That mission will be and our identity that when they mention us, people will know that the gospel is traveling from our church to other people. In the book of Luke chapter 19, 10, the Bible says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. This is who Christ is. So mission is inseparable from our faith. If you have faith in God, then you need to be part of God's program, God's mission. You need to testify him to those who are near and far. And we can do that through our mission, missionaries, sending them out and sharing the gospel together with them. The Bible says, together we are working with Christ. Together we can Join hands, hold the ropes for those who are going to deep down the world to share the gospel to them. And God wants all of us to be part as a church. Let us pray. God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you this hour that you have given to us. We thank you for what you have done in our life. We pray that you give us a heart that we we'll always see the need of the field. We pray that you give us a heart that we we'll always look up to the field and see that souls are dying. Father, continue to empower us so that we will be able to pray for the missionaries. We will be able to give to them. With all these things, I do pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we all stand? And as the piano goes, if God has touched your heart, and if God is talking to you, don't resist it. But be part of the missions of God. And that is what God wants us to do. Maybe you cannot go to Ghana. Maybe you cannot go to Iraq. Maybe you cannot go to China. But God is talking to your heart. The Holy Spirit is talking to you now. He's knocking on your door to be a faithful giver to Him. Will you come forward and pray to God? If God is talking to you, just come forward and pray to God that God, this is what I am purposed in within my heart to give it to you. God, I pray that you give me the confidence. I pray that you give me the boldness not to be slack in sharing the gospel to others. But my prayer is, God, help me to be bold in your ministry, in sharing your word to other people. Help me. I cannot do it with my mind. Help me, God. And if God wants you to, to pray, pray for people who are going, Just come and pray to God. 
if God is also wants you to surrender your life to go to other far, other parts of the world to share the gospel you become an obedient to the gospel don't resist but be an obedient to God and I pray that the mothers here you will allow your sons and your daughters when God is calling them to be a missionary that you will be able to be the one to support them for them to be an obedient to the Great Commission. Thank you, God. And you may now have your seat. You may now sit down, have your seat. Thank you, Missionary Anthony, for the challenging message. At this time, I'd like to call on our ushers to come. We'll receive our morning Tyson offering. So as, as they're coming, dun sa, in your uh, messengers, meron na insert na, na commitment slip. This, this commitment slip... Um, this is for, for promising God that for every week. We have 52 Sundays. Diba? So start praying that tung, tung money nati, this is faith promise giving, this is for missions. All the money that will be collected will go to our missionaries. Now the tithe is the the tithe, the ten percent is is we use it for the operations of the church, but the faith promise, we are talking faith promise, uh, board Jan, all of that would go to our missionaries. So I challenge everybody, just just be be part of of, of missions giving. Now in, in the Bible it says the importance of a soul. What will a, what will a man gain if he loses his own own soul? So even every, every peso, every peso would count. Kaya nga, if you're already part of the program, sabi nga ni missionary Mensa, you know, every soul that gets saved, you are, you are a part of that. So I challenge you, just be generous, be cheerful, and be consistent in giving our faith promise, faith promise giving. And I, and I encourage you to commit for 52 weeks Starting next on Sunday, because we'll give our, we'll 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 uh, collect all of this, and, and and we know how much are we promising for, for every week. So I just pray that you know we'll we'll reach our goal of seventy thousand. If each one would would be part, I'm sure that we'll we'll reach our our goal. Okay, so I may call uh, Bar Aaron to pray for our offering. Shall we rise as we go to the offering? Okay, let us pray. Again, our gracious God, we would like to thank thee, O God, for uh, uh, Missionary Mensa for uh, delivering us your message, O God. And as we go on, this, on the portion of this uh, service, O God, the offering, O God, may you use this, O God, uh, to support our church and, of course, to support our missionaries, uh, foreign and local, oh God. Again, bless uh, this offering and as we give the, the amount, the funds that you just entrusted to us, all the praises and glory always belongs to you, oh God. And you me pray. Amen. God bless you as you give. Again, I'd like to remind everybody to be back at 3 o'clock. Pastor Missionary Anthony Mesa will be speaking to us again. So maybe after eating, after lunch, be back, be back here at the church at 3 o'clock. And the young people also at, at 1.30. 1.30. And then sign-up sheets for sign-up sheets for 
those that would attend all in ladies fellowship on on uh, saturday november 23 uh, the speaker will be mrs esther tran um asawa siya ng missionary natin to vietnam okay speaking of vietnam all the members ng philippines and vietnam yung phil am uh, we'll have a short meeting. Updates lang of, of our, our booth later. Do not tie sa, sa, sa back of the extension. Okay, are you blessed this morning with the preach of God's word? Amen. Okay. Um, before we leave, I'd like um, to call missionary Felix and... and uh, Felix pala yung pastor niya. Anthony and, and his wife. We'll have a picture taking uh, para kasi January 22, alis na sila. They'll go back to, to Ghana. So as a church, we're, we're, we're the sending church. We want to take a, a photo with them, a picture with them to, to remind them na, na as a church, we're, we're really praying, praying for them. Okay, so maybe later we'll stand up, stand up, and let's let's scoot in the in the center so they can have a picture. I'd like to ask the, ask the, Miss Bihado to take our photo. Anthony, can you? Okay, let's all, all all stand up, please. We'll take a photo with, with them. Sana yung sa side mo, kung pumakuha sa gitna. Ay, yung iba po, scoot over to the middle. Yung mga nasa extension po, scoot over to the middle. Bibilang po si Biula ng picture and then magkakaroon po tayo ng video after. Pero practicein po natin ang sasabihin natin for the video. Can you say sama-sama para sa gana? Ready? Go! Wow! Energy! Ganahan po natin para sa gana. Okay. Sama-sama para sa gana. Ready? Go! Okay, later po natin gagawin yan. Beulah, are you ready to take the photo na? Okay, sige, everyone, smile. Okay, video naman. Again, practice po natin. Sama-sama para sa gana. Ready, game. One more time, ready? Energy po ha, ganahan po natin para sa gana. Okay, sama-sama para sa gana. Ready? One and a two. One, two, three, go! Okay po, thank you. Okay, let's, let's all pray. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, once again, we're so grateful and thankful for what has transpired this morning, Lord. We want to thank you for the message of Brother Anthony, Lord, that help us to be truly witness for thee. Lord, again, we as a church, help us, Lord, to really be compassionate and burdened for, for loss also, Lord. Again, thank you for the faithfulness of, of your, your members, oh Lord, that, that's, that's here. Again, Lord, we do pray that as we go on our separation this, this morning, help us to be back again this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and once again, to hear your word. And all these things, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, amen.